Welcome to worship. We are so glad you're here. There are lots of good things happening at the church, and we want you to know all about them and feel connected in every way. So, for starters, on your screen is the now familiar and beloved QR code. If you scan that symbol with your phone, magical things will happen. You'll be linked to our Connect card where you can let us know that you're here and also note any prayer requests that you might have. If you're somewhat new to our fellowship, we hope this will begin to feel like your church home as well. There's a phone number on the screen, and if you text NEW to that number, we can send you a very timely book called Anxious for Nothing. We would love to share that with you. If you have kids, you know how important it is for them to feel connected and to have a place where they belong, so we hope you'll take advantage of our meaningful programs for young people that can be found online. There are some special events coming up that we want you to know about. On September 8th is a program called Starting Point. It's a chance for you to kickstart your faith journey or maybe even start it from scratch. It's only an hour long and it's open to everybody, and you'll see info on the website about how to sign up. A few days after that, on September 14th, we begin a five-day course on dealing with stress in the midst of a pandemic. Pastor Nicole will be leading this video workshop, and there's more information about that on the website as well. So, as we continue to demonstrate and celebrate what it really means to be the church, it's about connection. So welcome to worship. No one belongs here more than you.
Hi, I'm Nicole Riley, the lead and teaching pastor here. And today we continue our series, but we don't see eye to eye part two. So over these three weeks, we're helping us think about how it is that we navigate this time. Uh, we live in a time where it is difficult to get along with one another. It is a challenge in the midst of political seasons to find the good in one another. So we'll continue to talk about that today because Jesus is calling us to be a different kind of people in this time. Um, and today we're going to talk about one of those components. He's calling us to be both and people instead of either or people. So we'll talk more about that. Today is also a communion Sunday, and so I invite you to have your bread or bread substitute, juice or juice substitute, ready for communion, which will follow the sermon today. So welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. So wherever you are, let's join together now in a time of prayer. Gracious Lord, we come to you in awe and wonder at what it means to be your children. That you would love us enough to call us into relationship with you, to save us by your grace, and to empower us with your Holy Spirit. We are indescribably thankful for the assurance that you are always with us and for us in the triumphs and the trials. Lord, as our Heavenly Father, you know that there are those among us who are facing some of those trials right now. And we lift those brothers and sisters up to you that they may feel the peace that comes from your presence, the power of your healing hand, and the comfort of your loving care. Lord, as we navigate this complicated world, Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see others the way you see them as your beloved children. May our focus be on aligning with you rather than maligning each other. Make us instruments of your peace, sounding notes of compassion, empathy, and harmony. Fill us with your Holy Spirit in this moment so that in every moment we may feel your strength when we are weak. We may know your wisdom when we are confused. And we can experience your peace when we are troubled. Live within us that we may shine your divine light wherever we go and bring glory to you in all that we do. We lift our prayers to you humbly and in your holy name. Amen.
one of our strengths as a congregation, and I think it's true of um, most United Methodist churches, is that we're a congregation that welcomes everybody. So if you're liberal or conservative or anywhere in between, you're welcome in a United Methodist Church. Now, I, I realize that um, there are lots of churches where people all kind of agree with each other, but the United Methodist Church isn't one of them. We are what's called a, a big tent, meaning that we have diversity in the church, and that diversity, of course, includes political diversity. So that means that you can come to worship, and uh, either in the old days when we would gather uh, in the building or gather online, and there will be weeks where you will think to yourself, uh, that sermon, uh, that pastor, uh, that church is too liberal or not liberal enough. That church is too conservative or not conservative enough. That church talks too much about politics or not enough about them. In fact, like every pastor, I have preached a sermon where afterward someone has said to me, that was too political. And the same sermon on the same day, someone has said, that was a real disappointment. You didn't take it far enough. Welcome to the world, right? We see things in a variety of ways. We don't all see things eye to eye. Here's the thing, though. Lots of times, because we don't see things eye to eye, we might leave hurt or upset, angry. We might feel like uh, this isn't the place for me because they don't believe exactly the same way I do. But what if God had more for us here? What if, in fact, God called us to be together, especially if we don't see eye to eye? What if that diversity we see in the world should also be in the church? Diversity, as we talked about last week, around race, but also diversity, as we're talking about this week, around around politics, around how we see the world, how we understand things. Last week, we began our new series, but we don't see eye to eye. And we are talking about this because we're in this tumultuous time. And, and our goal is that over these weeks, you would hear some things that would help you bring your faith and your politics together. As I explained last week, my role isn't to stand in judgment on your politics or to think you should have a different opinion. My role is to help you look at what you think politically through the eyes of your faith and also to help you have loving relationships with people who see things differently than you do. I believe, actually, that our seeing eye to eye, our agreeing with each other, was never the purpose or point. I don't think it was ever actually a possibility. I think the point is not for us to agree with one another. The point is not for us to be of one mind because uh, we each have our own mind. I think the point, the real point of all of this is much bigger than that. I think the point is to love even when we disagree. The point is to be in relationship even when it's hard. The point is to work for justice even though we may understand justice differently. The point in all of this is to follow Jesus. And how we do that is going to look differently, depending on where we sit, where we stand, our own experience. Last week I shared with you 
a couple things that I think about in times like these. And I want to share them with you again. And my hope is that they're helpful to you as you try to navigate the time. The first is that I value relationships over agreement. And the second is that I value Jesus' kingdom over my comfort. Both of these statements push me past where I might normally fall, where I might be most comfortable. When I talk about valuing relationships over agreement, that pushes me past my habit of needing to be right. It also pushes me past a bad habit I have sometimes of thinking that people who think differently are just wrong. Valuing Jesus' kingdom over my comfort helps me remember that there are important things I need to be doing and that they will often be uncomfortable and push me past what I would want to do. They're often the call to care, to serve, and to love. Today we are talking about an additional piece in all of this. We're talking about moving from being an either-or kind of person and uh, kind of orientation to a both-and orientation to life and people. So let's hear our text, and then we'll jump in. Then each of them went home while Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, he said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground, When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, neither do I, neither do I condemn you. Go away, and from now on, do not sin again. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This familiar text reminds us of how Jesus dealt with people. So let's look at each of the groups of people. First, we have the religious people of the day. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribes. In this text, it's the scribes and the Pharisees who are showing up. They have come to Jesus because they know this woman is wrong, and they know that what she has done should lead to her being put to death. In other words, they know their Bible. They know the sin and the result. They also have brought this to Jesus with their either-or thinking. And they're basically saying to Jesus, either you know the right thing to do, and you do it, or you're not sent by God. Second person in the text is, of course, the woman. We don't know a lot about her. We just know her sin, what has gotten her into this situation. Interestingly, though, it does take two to commit adultery, and the man is not there. And then we have Jesus. Now, Jesus knows what the Scripture says. He knows what the law of Moses told them to do in situations like this. But he's in both and kind of thinker. 
he sees the woman and the sin and the opportunity. And as a both and thinker, he pauses for a moment and then says to the group who are there, let anyone among you who is without sin to be the first to cast the stone. It causes them all to pause and think too. They leave and just the woman is left. We are ourselves often either or kinds of thinkers. We think things like either she gets her way or I get mine. We think either you're at fault or I am. Either you're right or you're wrong. Either I'm successful or I'm a failure. Either you're with me or you're against me. Either it's true or it's not. And either I take mine or someone else will get it. We are, I think by nature, either or kinds of speakers, kinds of thinkers, kinds of people. And in some situations, it's helpful. But in a lot of situations, it's not so great. People, life, is really a lot more complicated than either or thinking would lead us to believe. I've mentioned a TED Talk that had a great effect on me. It's the TED Talk called The Danger of the Single Story. And in it, Chiamanda Adichie speaks about how we often have this either-or thinking, this single story we tell about people, this broad stroke that we paint of one another. She says, The single story reduces all the complexity of a place or a people group into a single dimensional image that may capture some small part of the picture, but over time begins to stand in for the whole picture. How do we create a single story of a group of people? Well, we show people as one thing and only one thing, and we repeat it over and over again, creating this kind of people are this only. Either or thinking is a big part of this mentality. It is easy for us to put people in categories. People are good or people are bad. People are right or people are wrong. But of course, <laughs> it's usually way more complex than that. Why do we do this? Why are we so comfortable dividing people like this? Scientists say that it's actually something we do naturally and normally. It is easier for us to put people in hard and fast categories. It's one of the ways that our brain thrives because it makes our life easier when we do that. It makes it easier for us to assess a situation if people are good or they are bad instead of they are a mix of both. When we get into this two-dimensional thinking, this leads to immaturity. It leads to stagnation. And in today's text, one of the things we see is it leads to spiritual self-righteousness. When we are both and thinkers, it changes us. It actually opens doors. Both and thinking invites creative ways of looking at things. It invites us to learn from our mistakes. Both and thinking invites us into deeper thinking. And it helps us push past a scarcity, kind of a scarcity mentality we develop, and also a blame 
mentality we often have. Both and thinking opens up new possibilities. And when we don't see eye to eye, it is a really helpful skill for us to have. So how might we move more into both and thinking? A couple ideas. First one is this. Respect others' perspectives. Now, I know that sounds super, super basic, but it is often what is missing in our conversations. And that's because it takes humility. It takes an openness to another's experience. Try this experiment with me wherever you are today. Uh, Lift your arm in the air and point your finger and make your finger go in a clockwise direction. And now move your arm down till you can see it from the top instead of the bottom. What happens? Our clockwise moves and becomes counterclockwise because our perspective has changed. Perspective is something that is something that we all have. We all have perspective based on a lot of complicated things. Our perspective is based on where you grew up, what you're what your family valued. Our perspective is based on the education we have, the experiences that life brings us. All of these affect our perspective. There is an old saying, where you stand depends on where you sit. And I think that might be true. Jesus' perspective in our text today to this woman who's been caught in adultery and how he deals with it may have struck people as standing against the law of Moses, what Moses had told them to do, what the Bible's clear and simple teaching was. But really... What Jesus was about was something much bigger. He was inviting people to a deeper understanding. And he was inviting people to see the heart of God. When you and I practice a both and mentality, we're able to recognize another person's perspective And in that, we are able to see their heart and not just their actions. Next, realize that this is hard work, but that we can do hard things. I say this because it is tough out there. This is especially a tough season um, with all of the politics going around. It is easy and natural to put other people's thoughts and opinions down in this time. As followers of Jesus, we're called to more, and and I know that's hard. (laughs) And we can do hard things. We can do the hard thing. Um, The tagline for the series is a a more excellent way, and and that phrase comes from 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12 is a text where the church is struggling and there are problems, and then Paul says, but I will show you a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is what he talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, the chapter that is often called the love chapter. So let's hear that chapter now.
This is the call, the call to love. And while it is often hard, it is our call. And we can do hard things. Love is what makes us become both and people and what helps us walk in this way of Jesus. Okay. So as I was thinking about the text, I was thinking to myself, I wonder what happened next, right? I wonder what this woman did with her life after this experience. I mean, she has this encounter with Jesus who sees her as the complicated person she is, both both the good and the bad in her. And he offers her a chance. He offers her an opportunity. What did she do with that? Well, we don't know. But as I reflect on the text from my own life, it inspires me to remember my own shortcomings, my own faults, and to see others and their shortcomings and faults from a, a bigger perspective, a more godlike perspective, and to make the choice to love, even when it's hard. And when I do, I find that even if we don't see eye to eye, if I'm willing to be a both and person, that we're able to find a way forward together. We're able to make a relationship that matters. And we're able to follow Christ together. We will not all agree with each other. It was never the point to begin with. The point was to learn to love, to learn how to be in relationship, even when it's hard, even when we don't know how. This week, my prayer for you is that you would be willing, and when you are willing, God can do the rest. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, you call us to be people who forgive, who love, who understand, who see people not as black or white, good or bad, but to see people in the complexity and diversity that they are and to know that that is that's part of your plan. That's part of how you call us to be. And so do they. We come before you desiring not to be either or people who see things two-dimensionally, but to be both and people who open our hearts and our minds to how you would see and how you would call and how you would invite us to live. And so be with us and enable us to be your people this week. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. in the wilderness yeah we can't find what we need we get a little restless from searching get a little worn out in between like a bull chasing the matador is a man left to his own schemes everybody needs someone beside them shining like a lighthouse from the sea oh, brother let me be your shelter never leave you all alone I can be the one you call when you're low and brother 
let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving on. Be the one to light the way. Bring you hope. Face down in the desert now, there's a cage locked around my heart. I found a way to drop the keys where my failures were. Now my hands can't reach that far. And I ain't made for a rivalry. I can never take the world alone. I know that in my weakness I'm made strong, but it's your love that brings me home. So brother, let me be your shelter. Never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call when you're low. Brother, let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving on. Be the one to light the way, bring you home. And when you call and need me near, saying, Brother, I'm right here. And on those days when the sky begins to fall, you're the blood of my blood. We can get through it all. So, brother, let me be your shelter. I'll never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call, bring you home. Brother, let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving on. Be the one to light the way, bring you home. Brother, let me be your shelter, I'll never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call when you're low. Brother, let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving on. Be the one to light the way, bring you In the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to all people. And so I invite you to have your bread and your cup with you and uh, participate in our great thanksgiving. The words will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the disciples. And so with your people on earth and the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when he would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. 
On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And so your people brought together, joined together in saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, wherever we may be, and on this gift of bread and cup. May we be a people whose desires are transformed by your Holy Spirit so we live in the ways that lead to life. All of this we pray in the name of the one who calls us and invites us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to share your elements with those who are with you, offering words of uh, compassion and love and care. Hi, my name is Steve Justice. As you can tell, airplanes are a pretty important thing to me. I started working on my pilot's license when I was 17, and I still to this day remember the sense of awe that I had looking down at the beauty of the world God had created. And I continued to see that beauty throughout my life, the blessings that God had given to, to me, um, including things as simple as on my morning walks, the strangers to say hi and wish me a good day to the beauty of the sun as it sets over the Santa Clarita Valley. As I see what God has given to us, I know that God asks us to give. On your screen is a QR code along with several ways to give. Thank you so much for your faith and generosity that allows our church to reach out and help make this world an even better place.
So, I hope you heard something today that encouraged you to look at if you are an either or or more of a both and person and how you might become more of a both and person in your life. Because I think when we are more about both and, we find that there are relationships that are healed, that there are opportunities that are given, and there is more peace in our lives. So go this day to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Go from this time. Be Christ Church. Amen. Amen.